Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to our course Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lars and today's topic is how to read binary phase diagrams. How to read phase diagrams of mixtures. For example, this boiling point curve of the two components IBA, that is isobutanol, and IPA, isopropanol. On the abscissa, concentration of the mixture is plotted. On the left hand side, there's pure IBA. On the right hand side, there's pure IPA. In between all possible mixtures described by the mole fraction X sub B. On the ordinate, temperature is plotted. Between 80 degrees and 110 degrees Celsius. Generally, a phase diagram tells us what phases are present at a particular combination of state variables. In order to orient ourselves in this diagram, first we have to find the phases, the homogeneous regions of this diagram. If we choose a composition X and a temperature T, so to get a point in the phase diagram in the above right, we have a homogeneous gaseous mixture. If we choose a point in the lower left, we have a homogeneous liquid mixture. The boundaries of the homogeneous regions are called binodals. Binodals fence off the homogeneous areas to the heterogeneous areas in a phase diagram and often have specific names. The binodal, which marks off the region of the homogeneous fluid to higher temperatures, is called bubble point curve or boiling point line, the yellow line. The binodal, which marks off the region of the gas phase to low temperatures, is called the dew point curve, the purple line. Between bubble point curve and dew point curve, there's a two phase region. If we plot a point in this area, the system is unstable in a homogeneous state, but will decompose into two phases. But more on that later. For an ideal mixture, bubble point curve and dew point curve meet in only two points the so-called invariant points of the phase diagram. At these points, the system has got no degree of freedom according to the Gibbs phase rule. Firstly, this is a boiling point of pure IPA. Here liquid and gaseous IPA coexist at exactly 82 degrees Celsius. We've got one component, two phases, one degree of freedom, that's the pressure. On the other side, we find the boiling point of pure IBA. Here, liquid and gases IBA coexist at 108 degrees Celsius. Binodals without any maximum and minimum are typical for phase transitions of ideal mixtures. Mixtures of components A and B being chemically very similar. We want to discuss heating of a 50-50 mixture using this diagram. If you mix one mole of IPA and one mole of IBA and heat to say 80 degrees Celsius, we get a point in the diagram which is located right here on the abscissa at 0.5. So we have a homogeneous liquid phase. If we heat up, the liquid. This means we move up on a vertical in this diagram. It's a so-called isopleth, marked in green here. At about 92 degrees Celsius, the isopleth intersects with a bubbling point curve. That is, the mixture begins to boil. The composition of the gas phase above the boiling liquid 50-50 mixture we may determine using the so-called tie line. A tie line is an equilibrium line 
an isotherm in a two-phase region. We can draw any number of tie lines in the two-phase region. Each horizontal line between bubbling point curve and dew point curve, in fact, is a tie line. A tie line connects two phases in equilibrium. In our case, it connects the 50% liquid phase to the 70% gas phase. The gas phase is thus enriched in the lower boiling component IPA. A 50-50 mixture of IPA and IBA begins to boil at 92 degrees Celsius and the gas phase that results from the liquid phase is approximately 70% in IPA. We want to discuss another issue using the liquid gas phase diagram of IBA IPA. If you mix 65% IPA with 35% IBA and heat the mixture to 91.5 degrees Celsius, we'll end up at a point in the two phase area of the diagram. Between bubbling point curve and dew point curve. At this point, a homogeneous system is not stable but disintegrates along the tie line into a liquid phase and a gaseous phase. The stoichiometry of the decomposition follows the so-called lever rule. We draw the tie line in yellow. Through the point, we find that the tie line intersects the bubbling point curve at x equals 0.5 and intersects the dew point curve at 0 0.72. The system, homogeneously unstable, decomposes into a liquid phase with 50% IPA. Always read the liquid phase composition on the bubbling point curve. And a gas phase with 72% IPA. Always read the gas phase composition on the dew point curve. Consider the tie line as a lever with the initial point as the fulcrum. The lever arm A to the liquid side is approximately twice as long as the lever arm B, which means the amount of gas phase is twice as large as the amount of liquid phase. We will now discuss the cooling of air with the help of a liquid gas phase diagram of nitrogen and oxygen. At 82 kelvins, here marked in red, the air is still homogeneous gaseous with a composition of about 79% nitrogen. Cooling down to 81 kelvins, liquid phase condenses, which is 50% nitrogen. Only at 79 kelvins, the air is completely condensed. During condensation and evaporation of an ideal mixture, neither temperature nor composition of the phases are constant. But liquid gas phase diagrams with tie lines and binodals will describe the exact cause of condensing or evaporation. In ideal mixtures, the gas phase is always enriched in the lower boiling component. Thus, we are able to separate the mixture by distillation. In principle, an ideal mixture may be completely separated into the pure components by multiple distillation. This process may be plotted in the phase diagram as a stairs-shaped line. Now for non-ideal mixtures. The non-ideal mixture of water and formic acid shows a phase diagram with a maximum. The peak is also called an azeotrope. At this point, bubbling point curve and dew point curve intersect for a third time. The azeotrope from the third invariant point. It boils and condenses exactly 
as a pure substance. Therefore, it's not possible to separate a non-ideal mixture into the pure components by distillation. The non-ideal mixture of water and ethanol shows a phase diagram with minimum ideal choice. A liquid mixture of 95.6% ethanol will boil at a constant temperature of 78.2 degrees Celsius into a gas phase, which is also 95.6% ethanol. Accordingly, you cannot distillate pure ethanol from an ethanol water mixture. Here you find a phase diagram of the system hexane nitrobenzene below the boil. We may discuss the phase diagram in a similar way as a liquid gas phase diagram. We find a binodal, which separates the homogeneous region from the heterogeneous region. Above the binodal, the mixture is homogeneous. Below the binodal, it consists of two separate liquid phases. In this heterogeneous region, we can arbitrarily draw tie lines. If we prepare a 40-60 nitrobenzene hexane mixture at 25 degrees Celsius at room temperature, the system will be in state 1. The mixture is homogeneous. It's a single phase. If we cool this mixture, the isopleth intersects the binodal at about 20 degrees Celsius. This is state number 2. The mixture then splits up into two liquid phases. At 50 degrees Celsius, we find state number 3, a nitrogen benzene rich liquid phase 1 and a hexane rich liquid phase 2 coexist. The ratio of the two liquid phases can be calculated using the lever rule. Now for solid liquid phase diagrams. This is the solid liquid phase diagram of an ideal mixture, copper and nickel. It looks just like an ideal liquid gas phase diagram and we can discuss it in the same way. We find two homogeneous regions, the liquid at high temperatures, the melt, and the solid at low temperatures. There are two binodals and these are referred to as solidus and liquidus. The binodals intersect only in two points, namely the melting points of the pure components. In the two-phase region between the liquidus and solidus, we can arbitrarily draw tie lines. With the help of tie lines and binodals, we may discuss the solidification, say of a 60% melt. We find that during solidification of an ideal mixture, Neither phase composition nor temperature remain constant. Now this is the typical solid liquid phase diagram of a non-ideal mixture. Lithium chloride and potassium chloride. While the two components are perfectly miscible in the liquid phase, they form only few mixed crystals or solid solution in the solid state, however. Let's first look for the homogeneous areas in the diagram. We find liquid phase, melt at high temperature, marked earth to lower temperatures by a typical V-shaped liquid. We find two solid homogeneous regions. Potassium chloride mixed crystals, marked in red, and lithium chloride mixed crystals, featured in black here. These homogeneous solid areas may be so narrow that they are almost indistinguishable from the ordinates. All other areas in the diagram are heterogeneous. In the triangular area to the left, melt and solid potassium chloride mixed crystals coexist. In the triangular area to the right, melt and solid lithium chloride mixed crystals coexist. And the rectangular area consists of a heterogeneous mixture of solid potassium chloride and solid lithium chloride crystals. As expected, 
The melting points of the pure components are invariant points, the intersections of the spin noodles. And there is another invariant point at the minimum of the liquid. We call this invariant point eutectic. At this point, molten liquid, solid potassium chloride mixed crystals, and solid lithium chloride mixed crystals coexist at a constant temperature of 359 degrees Celsius. Like a pure substance, this mixture melts and solidifies at constant temperature. We want to discuss the solidification of an under eutectic melt in a schematic solid liquid phase diagram. We cool the melt, initial state 1, that is, we are moving out along an isoplet down to low temperatures. At state 2, we intersect the liquids. Potassium chloride crystals precipitate from the melt. As we cool down further, the potassium chloride crystals grow. The melt accumulates in lithium chloride and moves along the liquids to the eutectic. In state number three, large potassium chloride crystals coexist with the melt of eutectic composition. Now temperature remains constant until the eutectic mixture has completely solidified. At the final state four, we find large potassium chloride crystals in a solid eutectic matrix. This matrix is heterogeneous. It consists of an intimate mixture of potassium chloride and lithium chloride crystals. At the eutectic, a liquid phase is no longer stable below a certain temperature and decomposes into two solid phases, kind of floor temperature for this liquid. Conversely, at a so-called peritectic, a solid phase is no longer stable a above a certain temperature and decomposes into another solid phase and a liquid phase with a different composition. This is also called incongruent melting. With congruent melting of a solid compound, we find the dystectic. With congruent melting, the solid compound formed of A and B melts to a homogeneous liquid phase with the same composition. We can tell a eutectic by the V-shaped structure of the liquidus, and we can tell a paratectic by a kink in the liquidus, and the roof-shaped or T-shaped structure of the solids. If these structures occur and only solid phases are involved, we speak of an eutectoid or often paratectoid. Let's have a look at the famous iron-iron carbide phase diagram. We find the liquid homogeneous area, the melt, up here, and we find four solid homogeneous regions. Solid alpha ion, bottom left, solid gamma ion, the somewhat broader area, right here, and solid delta ion, top left. And we have solid cementite, iron carbide, that is the right boundary. All other areas in this phase diagram are heterogeneous. Now we can see several invariant points. The eutectic at this point, V-shaped liquidus. Below this temperature, the melt is no longer stable, but decomposes into gamma iron and cementite. We can see a eutectoid at this point, again V-shaped solidus. Below this temperature, gamma ion is no longer stable, but disintegrates into alpha ion and cementite. Gamma ion does not only have a floor temperature, but also a ceiling temperature. That's where the peritectic is located. Gamma ion decomposes into delta ion and melt. Furthermore, 
that was dystactic at this point at the right, cementite melts congruently to the corresponding melt. Let me give you some rules for discussing phase diagrams. First, find the homogeneous areas. Then search for the binodals and designate them as bubbling point curve, dew point curve, liquid with solids, and so on. Finally, determine the invariant points and characterize them as eutectic, peritectic, and so on, recording the corresponding phase equilibrium. Thanks for watching. Bye.